Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim. Really? I must be Rinda then. And we are Hardiness Approach. <laughs> we uh, had a little bit of uh, an experience while we were raising our meat broilers. Everyone has experiences while they raise their yep. meat broilers. And um, we have done extremely well. We ordered a hundred of them. And I think they sent us about 103 or four. And for those of you who haven't watched that whole journey, we have two other families that uh, we talked to them and they wanted to have some broilers as well. So that enabled us to buy a large enough quantity that we got a lower price per bird. Plus in buying the feed, we bought more than enough feed that we were able to get free delivery and we got a good per pound price on it by buying it bulk. So the combining was good for all of us. Yep. And that's, that's where we are. So there yep. are other families involved here. It's not just us doing 100. We don't quite need 100 broilers for the two of us. No, we don't. But we are taking care of them <laughs> and moving them every day. And we have the four chicken tractors. And we wanted to talk a little bit about mortality rate. We were reading in Joel Salatin's book this week about his pastured chickens and when he has interns come onto his homestead, his farm. And one of the rules is they can only run over. That's his standards that he's having them yeah. uh, achieve. Correct. That's their goal. They can only, they're only allowed to run over one in a hundred times of moving the, that. So they have to be really careful so they do not run over the chickens. Um, we had one that died when it was about three or four days old. It was underneath and it was just tiny and little. Just happens. And um, then we had, seems like we had one more die. Can't remember because I remember going, okay, that's one from ours and one from theirs and like that. I can't remember. And then we went on vacation and we had these two families move our chickens In, inexperienced, for us. not used to doing it do it had to do it at night or yeah. early morning and three of the chickens got ran over and, and injured not and just ran we've ran over them before and not injured them but not we these. Were, we were lucky. Not not this week <laughs> we haven't. When we were first starting. Well, we had them, I still have them raised up more because they used to slip right out in the back. You know, we wouldn't. Anyway, three of them had their legs broke. And we've had them in the hospital. We've had them in a special pen. Our hospital. <laughs> where we were taking care of them. And it kind of broke our hearts every day when we try to do things. Well, as they, they weren't healing. They, it, we, we had hoped that it wasn't as serious as it turned out to be. So. But it was. And so this last Saturday, we decided that it was time to put them out of their misery and send them to heaven. And so we did. And there was one that was very, very tiny. But we were determined not to lose, not to waste them, not to waste their lives, right? Yes. And we, I make no bones about it. The last one was only about this small. And I actually held it in my arms as he killed it and then held it as its little heartbeat and everything as it was dying. And it was very hard but I did it and then we have a piece that we are showing you about our new plucker and we thought well we got our plucker on Saturday let's go ahead and process them and see how the plucker works and um, so I'll show that part okay. right now yep we're ready to try the plucker we've got our three little ones that had been injured uh, they're ready for us to do the plucking. We're going to see how it works.
Very clean. This one just has that. This one is done. I'm just going to do this one a little bit more, Jim. Okay. Can you turn it on? I think I just didn't have it in the water long enough. The main part of it's done. Okay. So the plucker works great. I might not have had one of them in the water long enough. This is very hard. Today was super, super hard for me because one of them was so tiny and I actually held it while Jim killed it and it let it die in my arms. I never, ever, ever take this lightly. This is very, very serious, important thing to me and Jim, both. But it would have been more tragic if we'd have just tossed them and they didn't get to live long enough to try. And we tried, but I couldn't watch them suffer anymore. So now we will at least be able to put their meat in the freezer. Okay. So the plucker worked very well. And then we took the chickens and, and we, we cleaned them all, all three of us, all three of us. All three of all them. All two of us yeah, cleaned we work them. them. And Together. we put them into the cold chill and then we put them in the refrigerator and I said, you know, I'm not even gonna freeze these. Let's just take care of them now. And so I cut them all up I cut them up all the legs and the breasts and everything and, and it was very evident you could see where their broken legs had been and why they were hurting so bad. And so yesterday for our Sunday dinner we had fried chicken and we were very aware that we were eating them. Really, with all that we're trying to do, making certain that their life wasn't wasted. They had a purpose, and for them to fulfill it, even in, in, in a crippled way, uh, was at least redeeming for what went on. So it wasn't a total waste. And <laughs> The chickens uh, are gathering around us. <laughs> half of them are here. Foraging. <laughs> The big hands. <laughs> they always think we have something for them to eat. They're going to come <laughs> and check it out. It's going to just jump up on us. I know it. <laughs> anyway, we, we decided to cook all of the meat. Now, it was three chickens, but it was probably the equivalent of a large chicken and a half. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we ate, um, we love the dark meat. And so we ate um, fried chicken yesterday for lunch, and we have some today left over for our lunch. And then we did all of the breast meat, which we will cut up and we cooked that all. And now we're gonna make like enchiladas or chicken salad. Yeah. Anyway, it made me feel really good that they didn't, we didn't just toss them, you know? They were good. Yeah. They were good. Yeah. One of the things about jo uh, Joel Salatin is he has a mortality rate, he allows it a mortality rate of it's about 10 percent. Yeah, 80 birds in a 800 birds that yeah. he has. And um, those are Cornish Cross, and we don't do Cornish Cross. Um, I can tell you that these chicken were absolutely delicious. These, they were. They were these fantastic. were Red Rangers. Even for their size, uh, in relation to the bones, there was lots of meat. It you know, was. They, these are smaller birds, obviously. They weren't mature but plenty of meat and it was good. It was tender, it was uh, tasted very good, great texture, I, it was a good job. We I just thought it was important to let you know that we didn't waste it, that, um, that we ate it <laughs> and we are still eating it. And um, it, that it's important that's part of a homestead that we do that. Yeah. So what fun things today, what's today like? Today is gorgeous, oh my, my goodness. goodness. I, I'm so sad I have to do work inside. I'm wanting to be outside and, and I'm eager to get my work finished so that I can do that. 
Well, tell them what we did on Saturday afternoon out there. Hmm. So I do have pictures to show. Weather cooperating, finally, and having time when we weren't pressed to do other things, we went out into our field and we walked it, uh, quite a bit of it, to do some measuring, some looking. And we made some discoveries that, you know, just measuring some of the, the, the back side, the back end of it and how wide it was and kind of estimating for pastures, for the elderberries that we're going to do and also the locating of the gardens, locating of the high tunnels. And what we're seeing, you know, different times of the year, different conditions, uh, we start to observe more. And really that's, that's a permaculture principle to be more aware of what's there and what we're seeing in areas that are a little lower. I mean, there's nothing, there's not a lot of difference, but there are high places and low places. And in the low places, it looks like areas where water kind of seeps through, where it's coming down the hill or wherever it's coming from. And so underneath of the soil, not as far, there seems to be more water, whereas these higher places, it's drained off. So in the low places, more grass, Taller grass. You guys, less, not just tall less grass. Of, less of the weeds. Succulent oh, grass. Up, up to your knees. Beautiful. Kind of grass. Like, got to get yeah. an animal on this grass. Yeah. Oh. So, now, we don't know grasses really well. I don't know the what we're calling weeds out there. If, if some of the grasses that we're seeing aren't that good and some of the weeds would be good forage, we don't know. But what we're seeing in areas that tend to be a little drier, that there is usually a larger number of weeds in comparison to the amount of grass. So it's kind of interesting what we're seeing with the different sections and it's going to influence some of our choices about where to place, whether it's pasture or gardening or whatever we might do, but also letting us know that we may need to do a little bit of leveling to make certain that uh, some of what we want to grow has a better chance of succeeding. So great educational opportunity, but uh, it's wonderful to see it at different times and there's been no we look at around us the neighbors who have been grazing cows or horses or whatever and their grasses are you know just right down to the ground ours is like <laughs> I know, know we desperately really need to get a cow <laughs> so you know we're we're wasting it they're totally using it up and somewhere in between there is where it ought to be uh, but that's what we want to be doing is getting getting cows out there uh, and, and other ruminants. Well, we're so. so excited because we actually are putting together a list of what is the food that we want to grow and how much do we need to have it for the whole year or to have it until the next planting comes up because we are getting a high tunnel. Yes. And uh, we know that Living Traditions has a high tunnel and they've extended their season really well and they've got their starts going and that's just amazing. I mean, they had their starts going early, yes. you know. So we're super excited to be able to do this and to share some of our land with some of our friends so that they too can grow food for their family. It just seems like we've been so blessed with it. We have to yes. share it. Yes. So we took... But, but it was a great Saturday afternoon to look at those. It was. We have area. two pictures that we're going to show. One of them is about um, General Lee, our tree. And in fact, I will put the video above here that links that old video where we discovered General Lee and um, I'm gonna circle on this picture that you're gonna see Jim and you'll see how big he is or how little he is compared to this tree because I, I was able to look at that and the other picture that we took and we didn't do a video we just took a picture is standing at the back of our property or halfway onto our property back there and taking a picture as we turned around and went oh my this is ours and there was pi our pigs grazing and it was just yeah it, it was so fulfilling yes so fulfilling it was it was we're excited <laughs> <laughs> So what we're going to do is divide up our time. We have so many lists of so many things to do. When it's sunny, we got to work outside. And when it's cold, we got to work inside. And we have a house that is very, it does not, in the winter it was chilly. I mean, in the, I'm sorry, in the summer it wasn't that hot. Right. And in the winter, it is not hot at all. <laughs> or some, now. It tends to stay cool. It doesn't it get warmed cool. up by the sun. Um, which which is great. 
we're trying to figure out some passive, you know, add some sunrooms to it to get some passive heat into there because it's silly to have a heater on inside when it's beautiful outside. Yeah, yeah. So we have a lot to do to get it to where there's a, a balance where cool air is not flowing through it because of porousness in the walls and we're correcting that and uh, damp air coming up from the crawl space and warm air escaping out through the ceiling. So you know it's a combination of things that all need to get improved. As we get there it's going to be better. We'll get a better balance to the temperatures in the house. Yep. Anyway, thank you for joining us on our little homesteading journey and we are continuing to have fun. Yes, we are.